Hello, Tony Burke here with the third in our series of screencasts for construction study students at the University of Westminster designed to introduce them to Revit 2014. In this screencast we're actually going to start building our 3D model uh, and the model we're going to build is uh, of this uh, rather simple bungalow. It's not a very exciting building but it does provide us with enough scope to explore some of the basic tools in Revit. So this particular screencast is going to focus on just establishing the levels for our project and laying out our site. The site that we're going to be basing this project on is a rectangular site measuring 20 meters by 25 meters with a simple rectangular bungalow uh, placed towards the front of the site uh, measuring 14 meters by 8 meters and the bungalow is set 5 meters back from the, the front boundary and 3 meters in from either side. It's also worth um, just explaining the, the levels that we need to focus on. We're going to start with um, the ground level, uh, which for the purposes of this screencast we will take as representing zero. Um, we're then going to establish a level which represents the top of the wall, just below roof level. Uh, that's going to be 2,800 mil above ground level. Uh, we're going to fix the uh, the ground floor level which is going to be at 150 mil above ground level and we're also going to indicate the uh, the top of the foundation which is going to be 250 mil below ground level. I've indicated here that the base of the foundation is going to be 1200 mil below ground level but for the purposes of the project we don't actually need to identify that level uh, in our on, on the screen. Okay, so the first thing we need to do then is to open Revit and when we do so we're presented with our splash screen which will typically look something like this and we're actually going to open a new project. So if we click on new uh, and just bear with me while I come out of this um, slide presentation and go into the live Revit, when we open Revit then the first screen we see will look something like this um, and as I said it may seem a little bit odd but we don't start um, drawing immediately the first thing we need to do is to, to establish our levels in order to establish our levels we need to go into any elevation view so I'm just going to pick the first listed view there known as the east elevation I double click on that and we can see that by default there are already some levels uh, fixed in the project I don't actually want this level one uh, four meters above because it's actually um, a very small building that we're going to be working on. So if I click on that level, I'm actually just going to delete it. It gives me a warning, asks me am I sure that I want to delete it. I click OK. The level zero is going to represent our ground level. So I'm going to change the title of that level. Uh, so again, if I double click in the, um, the, the title of it there, a little box appears and I can just over type the title that I want. So I'll call this ground level. I hit enter and it asks me if I want to rename corresponding views. I'm going to select yes and as I do so if you just cast your eye over to the project browser here on the left you can see that in the floor plans one of the floor plans has been renamed to ground level. That's because I asked for that level to be the, for the corresponding views to be changed. Okay, so now I want to add in a few more levels. I need to go into the architecture tab up on the ribbon. Over on the right hand side I select level and you'll see that as I now uh, point towards the middle of the screen as I move the, the mouse around you can see a crosshair and as I move it up and down you can see a dimension line appearing. Um, now I could just drag that out until I get to the required dimension. In this case it's the top of the wall which is 2800 but that can be a little bit fiddly. It's much easier when I'm doing this to simply enter the dimension I want from the keyboard. So directly from the keyboard I just type in 2800 and you'll see that a little box opens and it allows me to enter that dimension. I hit enter and that has actually fixed a new level at 2800 millimeters above ground level. So I drag that out across the screen, I click once, I go back to the title of that level, I double click in the title of it, so I'm going to change the, the name of this one as well. I'm going to call it top of wall. I hit enter again, 
do I want to change corresponding views? Yes. And again, you'll see now that in the floor plans in the project browser, the top of wall has appeared. OK, I'm going to carry on this process because the next level I want to put in is uh, 150 millimeters above ground level to represent our finished ground floor level. So same process again from the keyboard, type in 150, hit enter, drag out the level, click, change the name, uh, ground floor level, hit enter, corresponding views, yes, again you can see in the project browser that another floor plan has appeared and the final level that I want to put in is the top of the foundation which is 250 mil below ground level so same process again just pull the crosshairs down below ground level 250, pull it out, click, change the name to top of foundation, corresponding views yes and I'll hit enter again and we've now fixed four um, ground levels, sorry four levels. Now they, these levels are only visible in uh, elevations and if we create any sections they'll also be visible there. So if for example I go into our 3D view um, we won't actually see anything if we go back into the east elevation there's the levels or the north elevation again you can see the levels so they look a little bit of a mess but you can um, reconfigure the position of these lines if you uh, just point at one of the level lines click on it and if you look closely you'll see just by the circle there there's a little circle if I click and hold on that I can I can drag that out let's just zoom out a little bit so that you can see what I'm doing click and hold on the circle pull that line out a little bit makes it a little bit more um, easy to read for the ground floor or oh, sorry the ground level if I click on that line there pull that one out for ground level you can see that one click on the ground floor level, pull that one, just separate it a little bit, top of foundation, pull that one across to there, and then if I pull out the other end, it should pull all the lines with me. Okay, so that's a little bit easier. Um, it's made it a little bit more straightforward, but we have now um, fixed our four levels that we need for the project. Okay, the next thing I want to do is to lay out the site. So I'm going to go into the floor plan view, which is, is referred to as the site. If I double click on that, and what you'll see is this rather strange looking screen. These four circles with arrows on them simply represent the the views of the standard elevations, the east, north, south and west elevations. The, the blue sort of circle and triangle in the middle, if we were uh, referencing this to a base point then we could use that as our base point but for the purposes of this ex exercise I'm actually going to ignore that. Now in order to uh, establish our site what we would normally use is in the massing and site tab up there on the ribbon we use something called a topo surface and the topo surface enables us to define uh, a topographical surface on the site um, now if you had a site which had um, all different levels all over it you could actually import a topographical survey from another package and and place it into our uh, into our Revit but for the purposes of this exercise I'm just going to define a level plane which is going to represent our site. Now normally uh, if we are using the uh, the topo surface tool then it's a sort of a, a completely sort of free tool so I can just sort of click on uh, various corners um, and define a, a the boundaries of our site but that's not very helpful to us because we want to define some fixed boundaries so I'm just going to click on that cross there to, to cancel that yes I do want to discard it um, 
the topo, topo surface tool doesn't allow you to um, to work to any sort of horizontal and vertical lines uh, very precisely. So in order to help us, I'm going to put in some detail lines as guidelines. So if I go to the annotate tab, uh, click on detail line, and you'll see now some crosshairs appearing. I can click to enter a start point, which I'm just going to put in in a, in a random position in the top left hand corner. That's now defined our start point. And you can see that as I drag the mouse downwards, the, a, a truly vertical line um, a, appears on the screen. And again, you can see dimensions appearing. Now, if you recall from the start of this screencast, our site dimensions were 25 meters by 20 meters. So if I enter 25,000, because that's 25 meters, I hit enter, that has now drawn a line with the exact dimension of 25 meters. And from the base of that line, I can now pull out a perpendicular line. And again, I can enter a dimension 20,000, because it's 20 meters. I hit enter, and that has now drawn uh, a, a line perpendicular to the first line running from that bottom corner. I do exactly the same on the other side. So this time it's 25,000 again up to the top. And now because that's exactly lining up, I can just pull that across. And as the two lines meet, a little purple square appears. When I see that purple square, I can just click again. And that has now closed the rectangle. And I've got a perfect rectangle representing our site. Now those detail lines are only visible in this view. So if I go into, for example, the ground floor level, I will not see those lines. If I go to the 3D view, I won't see anything either. They're only visible on the site view. But what they enable us to do now is to fix the boundaries of our site. So I go back into the Massing and Site tab. This time I select the Topo Surface tool again. And now, as I hover over that intersection there, you can see our purple square. I click, I take it down to the next corner, click again, to the next corner, click again, up to that top corner, click again, and then across there to click to close the topo surface. If I'm confident that that's OK, I now click on the green tick to finish the surface, and I've now established our site. And you think, well, how does that look different from the detail lines that uh, I had on there originally? Well, to see that, we simply go into our 3D view. So we go over to the project browser, click on our 3D view. And what we can now see is that we have created a plane. And that plane in three dimensions represents the boundaries of our site. The plane does not have any thickness. You can see that it is just a uh, a, a, a plane that exists to represent the surface of our site, but the corners of that plane um, show the boundaries of our site. Now it's onto this site that we are going to place our building, and we will start doing that in uh, the next screencast. But for the purposes of this screencast, we have established the levels for our project and we've laid out the site. So I hope that's been clear.